Good morning, Father's Day 2020. I got to admit, Father's Days are no longer the joy they once were when my children were younger. So if you're a father like me, our kids are long grown, or if you still have little ones at home, maybe, maybe you're one who's still looking forward to that day when you have your children, I want you to open your heart to this message this morning as we talk about our Father's love. I love being a dad to kids. I, I love the bedtime stories, uh, the conversations around the dinner table, the wonder in Rhiannon's eyes as uh, she would just be dreaming and planning and thinking and the conversations we would have. Uh, with Ben and Josiah, it was uh, always the conversation about sports and different people and different teams. Uh, they were great days. I love being a dad to smaller children. This morning I want to talk to you about a couple of things. First is I want to talk to you about the idea that Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 29, He has not left me alone. He is always with me, Jesus said, about his heavenly Father. I remember times when my father, he was always there for me. Uh, when it came to bowling and when it came to business. In my bowling life, he would sit right behind me in the lanes and he would encourage me and he was so excited for me when things are going good. But whenever I would mess up and I would miss an easy spare, my dad would cry out, Oh! It was so loud that the entire 40 lanes knew that I had missed a spare that I shouldn't have missed. It was a blood-curdling scream. Now, he didn't try to embarrass me, mind you. He wasn't trying to do that. He was just so invested in everything that I was doing. And you know what? All of the other teenagers that were bowling, they learned to respect my dad and they appreciated it. Yeah, they would give me a little hard time, but, but that was all right. My dad was always there. He traveled with me all over the state of California for my bowling tournaments. He invested into my life. With business, he, he taught me the lawn maintenance business starting at the age of four. I would go out and I would run the, the gas-powered vacuum, you know, and, and I just learned all the aspects of the business. Uh, whenever I was 12, my dad's health had declined and I would do lawns in the neighborhood and, and, and he helped me get that going and planned. But then at the age of 16, he said, son, tell you what, let's get the business started again. And he helped me by learning how to advertise uh, how to estimate the work, um, how to do equipment maintenance and, and customer service. My dad was there for me. He always invested into my life. Until that morning, it was December 27th, 1984, and I received the call from my base commander. Actually, he came to my house. We were moving from an off-base house in Biloxi, Mississippi, onto the on-base housing. He came up and he said, Sergeant, what are you doing? I said, well, it looks like I'm moving into my house here. He said, hook your phone up. Make a phone call. Your sister wants to talk to you. My father, he's still with me. I still hear his voice. I still hear his, hear his encouragement. I believe that he is, his love and, and his presence changed my life. And you know what? From time to time when I mess up on the easy stuff, I can still hear the, oh, Ethan. <laughs> Jesus knew that his father was with him. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus is telling us today and telling his disciples then, I am with you always. I'll never leave you. I'll always be with you. I think about my daughter, Rhiannon. When I was young and I was trying to make a name for myself in business, she was just a, a little kid. I was a, she was about two whenever I got out of the military. I used to work long hours, and I tried to be home in time at night to be able to say prayers with her at bed. We would kneel together beside the bed and pray, and we would read books. And I think she learned to love to read just those nights being there in the bed we would read the Chronicles of Narnia, the entire series we got through, and she loved those moments. Today, 
Lincoln, he still loves to read. And Cora, it's so funny. I still see pictures of Cora. She's laying down on their golden doodle. He's, he's her pillow. And she's looking at books, even though she can't read yet. She has loved reading. I think that it makes a difference when we spend time with our kids and we invest in them when they're young. I traveled a lot during that time period with business, but I always tried to be there for her school activities and programs. You see, Jesus tells us he's always with us, and he is. And fathers, we need to be there for our children. I think of Ben and Josiah, poor Paula. I was going to school full time in DC, uh, Monday nights, all day Saturday, and I was working a full-time job in Tyson's Corner, and I would travel once a month uh, to Texas or California or Arizona. I was traveling always with this job. I was a pastor of a tiny church, and um, Paula had to carry a lot of the weight. There was a lot of things she had to do when, when the boys were really young. I missed a lot from 1989 to 1992 still a sorrow in my heart when I realized how much I must have missed. But when Joey was four, we decided it was uh, better for us to be poor than to me not be at home. And so Paula went to work, and I began to pastor the Loudoun Valley Church of the Nazarene full time. It was during that time period I began to coach Little League. I volunteered in the school. I would walk into the elementary school. It was a small little elementary school, one room for each grade, and in the center of, of the circle, there was a room there for the cafeteria, and they bring the computers out, and I was the dad who knew computers. And so I would teach the kids uh, kindergarten, how to place your hand on home row, and I invested a lot of time. I cooked. Now, I didn't clean. Ladies, don't, don't, don't think that you're going to teach us men how to clean. I didn't do that. But I was, I was doing all I could to be there. As uh, the kids continued to grow, I didn't only coach Little League, I, I coached basketball. And you know, Ben and Josiah both learned to love to give back to their community, and they helped me coach, and it was a beautiful time. I don't know what my kids uh, think these days. I had a dream in my life. If I could be half of the father that my dad was, my kids would have a great dad. I'm so blessed. I had, I had the greatest father in the world. He loved and he cared and he was present. So when 9-11 hit, one of those planes flew out of Logan Airport from Boston, and that's where Rhianna was going to school at Eastern Nazarene College. It was tough. She was scared. We flew her home as soon as we could, and we spent a lot of time with her, making sure that she knew that she was going to be safe as much as we all believed we would be safe. And then Ben, uh, we drove him to Olivet near Chicago when he went to school and we dropped him off there and then whenever he got out of uh, his undergraduate studies, I hopped in the car with him and we loaded it up and, and I rode with him as he drove all the way from Virginia out to San Diego, California to go to Point Loma to do his master's degree. I always wanted to be present in my children's life. I hoped it would make a difference. But know this, that Jesus is always with us too. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. But it's an opportunity here on Father's Day for us, for us some to think back and remember to ask for forgiveness if we need to. But for others, we could make a commitment that we might be like the Heavenly Father who is always with us, that we can always be with our children. I'll never forget, it was just a few days before Joey's accident. He had just come back from camp and we sat in the, in the car and we talked and in tears we shared with each other as he said, Dad, I'm really sorry for the things I've been doing and I, I really want to make a commitment to turn my life around. And he was getting ready to prepare for his senior year of high school and he says, I, I, I now know I want to go to school, but Dad, I don't want to be nothing like you. I don't want to be like Rhiannon. I don't want to be like Ben. I, I want to be my own self. And I said, sure, Joey, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to be yourself. It was kind of funny as we sat in the car and we talked for hours that day. He said, Dad, I think I want to be a teacher. I chuckled. 
And I realized that he never came to experience the fact that he was already a better teacher than I ever was or would be. And he was better with people that I might have thought that that might have been a gift, but he was so good at it. God is always with us, folks. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. And as fathers, we have this opportunity to experience life with our children, to be present with them, because I believe it will make a difference in their lives. So I've talked about the fact that God's always with us, but I want to talk to you also that his love endures forever. God's love endures forever. First Chronicles 16.34, his love endures forever. Second Chronicles chapter 5, chapter 7, chapter 20, his love endures forever. In Ezra chapter 3, verse 11, his love endures forever. Psalm 100, 105, 106, 107, Psalm 117, 118, and Psalm 136, every other line, it says God's love endures forever. Jeremiah 33, 11, his love endures forever. Oh, if we could grab a hold of this truth that God's love so fills our life and so fills our heart, and I believe that that kind of love transforms lives. And I still remember today the love my father had for me. I remember that if he would be disappointed even in the smallest ways with me, he would never have to spank me. He wouldn't have to discipline me because just the look of disappointment was enough to just destroy my life. My father and his love. He said it with his actions. He said it with how he treated me. My dad always showed it, and he always told it. My best friend growing up, John Smith, he still, even today, will kind of make fun of me, but really he's not. He says, I remember your father, Ethan. He would always tell you, and it didn't matter if it was in a group of teenagers or just home alone, he would make these little baby sounds to me. And I'm a teenager, right? You'd think it'd be embarrassing. And then he would say, I'm my daddy's little love. How silly is that, right? Man, when John said that to me just a few months ago, whenever I was talking with him, he said he remembered my dad always saying that. I still hear his voice. I still feel the comfort and strength that comes from knowing that my father, he always loved me. And you know what? My best friend John, he was raised in a divorced home, and he experienced my father's love as well. And he still cherishes those memories. Our Father's love endures forever, but does our love for our children shine through? I hope and I pray as I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God and that our Heavenly Father would always be in the heart and minds of my children, just as my Father's love was in my mind. And I pray that, I pray that my children can draw back on some experiences and say, I knew that my dad loved me and believed in me. I pray that my children would always realize my love for them, my belief in them, and that it will always endure and always be there. I believe this, folks. I believe this wholeheartedly. Knowing that you are loved, it transforms your life. I've told us before, I've said that, that I believe it's God's love. Knowing that God loves us, it's part of this transformation that takes place in us. I believe it instills courage. It instills belief and gives us a confidence. Think about this. If my father, my heavenly father is for me, if my earthly father is for me, no one can defeat me. And fathers, we have this opportunity today, this Father's Day 2020, to understand the power we have to transform the lives of our children. Think about this. I started a business at the age of 16 because of my father's 
hope and courage and belief in me. I was voted by the writers of all of the bowling newspapers for all of California to be bowler of the year at the age of 17. It was because my dad was there. I was the first one in my family to go to college, the first one to get a degree. I remember my dad always saying, son, you're going to get an education. You're going to get a degree. He never saw me walk across the stage. My dad had a third grade education. For all the education he didn't get at school, he passed on to me with great courage and love. I followed in his footsteps to join the military. I always honored what my father did serving in Okinawa during the last few days of World War II. My dad always believed in me. And his love transformed my life. My God has never left me either. He's not going to. And my God's love for me has endured and will endure forever. And fathers, the, the best thing that we can do for our children is to show them that we love our Heavenly Father and let them see how our Heavenly Father loves us so that we then can love our children with the kind of love our Heavenly Father has for us and has for them. Fathers, hear my prayer today and my advice for you today. Trust God. Place your full weight of trust on Him. Invest in your children. Invest your time. Invest your efforts. Invest your heart. Believe in your children, fathers. Even if they don't do what you want. You know, sometimes when the kids are little and you're excited and you're excited about things and you get so involved in their life and, and sometimes it's things you want for them, sometimes it's what, what they want for themselves. But I want to tell you something, fathers. There comes a time whenever they decide they're going to do something different. And you've invested all that time, but you know what? You need to still believe in them. You still need to trust them, even if they don't do what you want. You know what, dads, even if your children don't live their life the way you want, if they choose to live their life in ways that are maybe even against the ways that you raise them, I've never had this situation. But you know what I would hope? I would hope that if my child ended up in prison for doing something horrible, that they would know this, that I would never leave them. I'd be there for them. And so most of us don't have to worry about that, right? So, so maybe if our children go in different directions than what we want, they choose lifestyles that are totally different than our, our own belief system. Our children need to know that they're loved. Because here's the thing. No matter what you have done, Dad, no matter what I have done, there's a heavenly Father that still loves us. He still believes in us. He still sees until we breathe our last, there's a chance that we could be fulfilled and do the things that would be a benefit in society. We need to always be there for our children, to always love them. And as silly as it sounds, <laughs> show love to them. I still hear his voice. Daddy's little love. <laughs> it was quite embarrassing at times. Only because I was a stupid teenager. And I was worried about what others thought. Oh, what I would give to hear my father and see my father say that again. And you know what, dads? Even when your children fail, Whatever failure means to you, even whenever they choose paths that are really destructive. Love your children. Jesus said his father was with him always. Jesus told us he'll be with us always. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And we hear the words that his, his love endures forever. May we let the Holy Spirit of God flow through us today as fathers and that our children would know we're always there for them.
and our love will always be there for them. Happy Father's Day, everybody.